Hi there. I enjoy cooking pumpkins, especially during the fall, and I'm a little upset that people only ever use pumpkins for two purposes, jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkin pie. So when I came across this recipe on food wishes, I really wanted to try it out. Chef John calls this pig in a pumpkin, and it's marinated pork braised in a pumpkin, cooked in a hard alcoholic cider inside a pumpkin for four hours. The pork is tender and falling apart, and the pumpkin takes on a wonderful squash flavor that you really should try. Of course, I had to cook it in a cast iron pan, and I think that helped cook the pumpkin even better. See for yourself. One thing I liked about this recipe is how easy it was. For our preparations, we grind fennel seeds, rosemary, and thyme together. Now, the original recipe calls for shallots, and I didn't have any shallots, but I did have an onion to chop up. And I know it's really lame to try to imitate Chef John's speaking tone, so this is the only time I'll do that. We cut up about two pounds of pork shoulder into large pieces, and it really depends on the size of the pumpkin you'll be using. This one isn't very big, so about two pounds of pork is plenty. From here, we mix in a tablespoon of kosher salt, two teaspoons of black pepper, and Chef John is a big fan of cayenne, so we add a quarter teaspoon of that. We add the ground up spices, and we add the onions. Then we mix it all together. From here, we cover the bowl with plastic wrap and let it marinate in the fridge overnight. This is going to be a long, slow cook, so about four hours before we serve it, we preheat the oven and we also preheat a large cast iron wok. And now we get to bring out the pumpkin. Chef John says to use a pie pumpkin for this, but I've learned from experience you can cook a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin and it will still turn out just fine. Normally, this is a pasta fork. <laughs> However, that kind of pumpkin is really big and you'd need to make a whole lot of pork in a pumpkin of that size. So a sugar pumpkin will work just fine for this dish. Also, it would take a lot longer to scoop out a big pumpkin. And when we're done scraping it out, we place the pumpkin in a cast iron skillet. And here's where I'll be doing something different from Chef John, using a probe thermometer to track the temperature of the meat as it cooks. And now we coat the marinated pork with flour, and we brown it in the cast iron wok. Be sure to cook it in batches. We're not cooking it until it's done. We just want to brown the surface of the pork because this adds a lot of flavor to it. And the hard part is done. We fill up the pumpkin with the pork And then we add some hard cider until the pumpkin is almost full. Cooking the pork in fermented cider will give it a flavor you really won't believe. We cover the pumpkin and push the probe into the meat. And we bake it in the oven at 350 degrees. In order to reach the point where the pork is tender and falling apart, we want to cook it until the internal temperature reaches 200 degrees. And now we wait. And I have to say, this cooked pumpkin looks amazing. And when we uncover it, the cooked pork looks just as amazing. It has a wonderful scent, and it's definitely falling apart. Now all we do is move it into a bowl for serving.
and we top it with some of the cooking juices. And we serve it topped with the pumpkin sauce, and especially with some of the pumpkin itself. If you've never eaten roasted pumpkin, then you owe it to yourself to give it a try. All I can say is, thank you to Chef John for a recipe that was easy to make and delicious. I hope you've enjoyed this and thank you for watching.